Yes, you are a sport, uh, Sarah Davy of Spartan FX, because you are on a public record as saying, Hi all, I regularly visit Portugal for work. It would be great to learn some basic Portuguese or at least a few words to get me by. I'm a complete beginner. Does anyone have any recommendations? How are you learning Portuguese? Any apps or courses you would recommend? Thanks, Sarah from Spartan FX. Uh, and here we are on our first uh, meeting of Let's Teach Sarah Portuguese. <laughs> So how are you how are you feeling about this? A little bit nervous, and I have to I have to apologise to the Portuguese um, because I'm probably about to butcher their um, language. <laughs> we do that every day here, Sarah. So you're in very good company for one thing. Um, I do it every morning for sure. Um, and you say you don't know any, and you're a complete beginner. But I suspect you do know one or two words already, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Raquel is Portuguese, isn't that handy? So uh, um, I, I th the, the thing, the thing is, I mean, it, it is good actually, and and that's why I imagine a lot of people do want to move to Portugal. Um, aside from other countries, is that it is very easy to get by. That's that's the the problem that it makes it harder for me to learn because everybody speaks English, and as soon as they know that you're English or speak English, they just start speaking to you English in the shops and restaurants, which makes it so easy to to as I said get by on holiday or live there. But then yes. obviously makes it challenging if you're trying to learn the language. Okay, yep, yeah, fair enough. And and hats off to you, um, and kudos to you for wanting to to put this out into the public domain. And we're going to be tracking your journey closely. <laughs> Um, and no <laughs> scrutinizing you. Sorry, I didn't. I, I didn't uh, mention that you know each other already. I mean, people must have been thinking, "How rude!" Carl didn't introduce Raquel. Uh, oh, to you. You. And I had the, the pleasure to be with Tara uh, personally, so it was it was great. Tara, I know. Do you have way, do you want me to move you that? like that? Okay. High five, Sarah. Oh, 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 oh that way. Oh no! Oh, no, oh, no, I can't. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let it begin then. And so it begins. Sarah's uh, learning of Portuguese. I think the, the, the basics. I mean, one way back in the day, of course, um, we, we've, we're finding out this morning um, that it is World No Tobacco Day. Um, and of course, there would have been back in the day World Tobacco Day when doctors would have been offering you cigarettes because they were good for you, It'd be teaching children how to smoke because that was all the rage at the time. Now we have World No Tobacco Day and we're now losing out on the opportunity to go up to somebody like when you did in the old days when you were learning French, you say, excusez-moi, avez-vous avez du feu? So you could get a light and you could have, you could spark up a cigarette and a conversation. That's not available to us today. And you probably don't smoke anyway, do you, Sarah? So we're going to go for different methods. It's good to start with the the times of the day, isn't it, Raquel? With the hola, bon dia. That's your yes. Would that be a good place to start with an hola, bon dia? Yeah, sure. Hola, bon dia. Okay, so hola, bon dia. That's fairly straightforward, Sarah. Uh, do we need to get her to repeat these things and embed? Oh, hola, bon dia. <laughs> Come on, hey. that was very very straightforward. That's how easy it is. It's, it, that's what it's going to be like for the rest of your Portuguese learning career. Now, of course, day turns to afternoon and you'll have an hola botar, won't you? Can you try an hola botar with us? Hola botar? <laughs> Can someone put these on the... Antonio F. And, and Philomena was watching as well. Uh, perhaps we can get you on the screen uh, to write these for us and other things that you think Philomena... Uh, Sarah might want to say Philomena and Antonio F, but Botard would be a BOA. Are you writing these down, Sarah? She is. I am writing these down. It's like homework, isn't it? Well, no, I don't see it like homework because that might put you off even more <laughs> uh, you know, to, alongside your, your, your possible fear of learning the Portuguese. Yeah, let's not call it homework. Let's call it um, post session fun. Um, uh, Botard, <laughs> do you like my <laughs> approach to teaching, Raquel? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm taking notes for my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He taught Portuguese to the Portuguese this morning. So, Botar is good afternoon. Now, here's the interesting thing. You don't actually say it at one minute past 12, do you, Raquel? We're going to get some cultural insight now. No. Okay, so there's a, a vortex in between what? noon and one o'clock, okay? Where yes. everybody in Portugal gets confused as to what should we say. Good morning, good afternoon. So that's a very hard time for every Portuguese. So we always say, Medea, 
Ah, já passa do meio-dia. Boa tarde. Bom dia. Boa tarde. Bom dia. Boa tarde. Uh, could you repeat that, Sarah? No, only... <laughs> But what did you just say, Raquel? Was like you, you speak to your friend and say, is it afternoon yet? Yes, exactly. Because if it's afternoon, it usually say boa tarde, after, good afternoon, after yes. we've had lunch. Yes. And so sometimes people have lunch at noon and sometimes people have lunch at one o'clock. So sometimes yes. people will say, oh, I don't know, I haven't had lunch yet, so it's good morning. Oh, is There it afternoon? Okay, so you try this. You try to say good afternoon to someone afternoon, and you'll see the confusion in every Portuguese eyes. <laughs> That's right, because what's going on secretly is, is they're asking themselves inside, have I eaten yet? Exactly. And, and, and worse, I know that I know if I have eaten or not, but have you? <laughs> so... <laughs> Sarah, uh, we're only a few minutes in. As, how is it going so far? <laughs> <laughs> well, it feels like if I say um, good afternoon, I might offend someone or they'll, they'll look at me in confusion. So. No, no. If you, you, what, the worst thing that can happen is you'll discover that they haven't had lunch okay. and that you've suddenly got a lunch companion. Oh, It's yeah, like, they will. Have, yeah, no, no. Yeah. They will probably invite me to lunch. That, of that's course generally they happens. Will. Yes, exactly. So no, no offense. Uh, just a little bit of confusion. And you have sent us pictures of some of your lunches. So it'd be a chance for you to enjoy that again. And that's what happened there. So I, I, I met a lawyer and he was yeah. like, have you had lunch? I said, no. He was like, oh, have lunch. There you go. So the bon dia, bon tard, the distinction is right there. You have learned your first, not only linguistic, But I think cultural lesson as well there. So, and, and definitely, hola, bon dia. Again, a, a cultural insight. It's not just a matter of saying hello or good day. Or, or, it, it is much more important than that. It is reaching out and connecting. Uh, which One I think question I do have is when you say thank you in a shop, It, it, do do people say it in different ways? Is there like a female and a male version or is it just one? Good, good. Oh, yes. Good question. Raquel, over to you. Uh, good, 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 great point, uh, Sarah, because I even see Portuguese people messing this up. And like, <laughs> so, uh, obrigada, obrigada, with an A at the end, is for female people. And I'm not going into the whole gender thing, okay? Female people. Whatever, okay? Whatever you identify with, okay? I don't care. Yes, right. And obrigado, for people who identify themselves as males, okay? Yes. Because obrigada is uh, much obliged, okay? So, but uh, in Portuguese, the it will depend the on female and male um, word. So obrigada for women, obrigado for men, and subsequent people that identify themselves with, you know. Any yes, other. and it's if about it's, none of them. I don't know. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's gender based on the transmitter. So you you yes. say obrigada because you're a woman. Yes, exactly. And, and you say obrigada because obrigada. I identify exactly. as a man. So even yeah. if I was say I was in a shop and a man was serving me, yeah. I would still say the female version because I'm a woman, or would I say the man because he's a man? Are, it's because you are much obliged. You, Sarah. Okay, that's why you are a female, so you say obrigada. You are much obliged. You are obrigada. And Carl mm -hmm. is obrigado. So, Carl, uh, uh, we are obliged. Uh, that's the rough translation, but that's a good way to, to, to take that into memory. So, always obrigada for you, Sarah. Always obrigado for you, uh, Carl. Yep. Uh, and I, th I think this is going incredibly well. I'm feeling a sense of... <laughs> There you well, that are. has given clarity because I thought I'd nailed it in a shop and then obviously in somewhere else someone said it different to me and I was very confused because I thought that's not what I picked up. <laughs> yeah, and Pete's confusing things a little bit here. This is a little bit more uh, regional and complicated, but just, just, just so you know, saying thank you is very useful out here in deepest, darkest central Portugal. Uh, you don't say obrigado or obrigada. We say beaja. Um, uh, uh, probably to everything and most things there, but but I mean I don't, you want, you might want to chuck that in occasionally, but probably more when you're out visiting people in central Portugal. So going well. So let's have a quick recap. Um, not just language; it's cultural as well. That's the beauty of this: is that 
by saying hola bon dia you might get a free lunch um <laughs> as Stephen is pointing out here so if you always say good morning to people they buy you lunch bonus see uh, aren't you glad you started learning portuguese when that sort of thing happens and not to worry too much don't worry about it. I've been saying bon dia all day until recently. And you will be forgiven. It's better to... What, what do you think of this, Raquel? It's better to say something than nothing at all, right? To connect. Well, you can say hola. There you go. Mm -hmm. Just a simple hello. Hola. Uh, no. Because if you go into a coffee shop at like late afternoon and you say bon dia, they will immediately say bon dia. Did you just wake up or what? Yes. <laughs> I'll bet you. <laughs> But a great another conversation starter, right? And I, yeah. I just it does seem to me, you know, on the streets of London, you might not say hello and smile at passers by. Um, you may or meet, you may not. You know, depends on your yourself and 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 obviously the local culture. But I think it it seems to me that certainly in Portugal, it's important to establish a connection with people. Something I want to ask you, Raquel, is sometimes I would just, um, you know, how some of the old guys, they kind of um, bark it almost, don't they? Like near. Yeah. And and that is that is hola bon dia, but just comes out as dia yeah. from an old man, and mm -hmm. and I've taken to doing that a little bit by saying bon dia bon to somebody, and then they will reply to me, and they'll put the hola at the beginning as though I should have said hola bon dia or hola, rather than just saying good afternoon or good morning, I should say hello and good afternoon or good morning. No 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 no, it's uh you, you're fine. First of all, <laughs> you're fine. Now, it's a way of responding and going a little bit further than just ah, so okay, it's okay. like acknowledging that you said good morning uh before them yeah. and that and so they are oh hi good morning you know yeah. it's like yeah. a response to your good morning okay very good oh, and there's me because i'm british thinking i've done something wrong constantly. no no, no. drop the guilt drop the guilt <laughs> which leads us on to saying sorry in portuguese which of course is very important for british people to yeah. be constantly apologizing for breathing oxygen taking up space and generally being anywhere near you so sorry 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 um and <laughs> the, yeah, the the way to do that in in uh, portuguese is F formally, fully, is the shkulp, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> what were you going to say? No. The, the, no, 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 no. I said see. See, uh, see, see. see. Shkulp, shkulp yes. is the formal, because you know that in English, there's no uh, formal way to, to acknowledge someone as you or yeah. you, your majesty, or you, your friend. I've noticed and that, that and I've missed, I've missed it, quite frankly. Yes. That yes. Because in Portuguese, there's a whole, like, social complication with that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Should yeah. I talk to you and, and say that you're a tu, or should I say that it's a vosti? Yes. So, desculpe means that you are uh, treating the other person as a vosti, so it's more formal, okay? Yes. okay. Uh, desculpa, you say to your friends or someone that you already know and that you treat... By two. You are such a good student, Sarah. Sarah is really listening, I can tell, oh, and writing. Right, nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and you're, I think you're doing very well. And so this is an important one. And this, again, there's another little bit of, yes, well said, uh, Lord Gilchrist, who's coming with a connaissance. Now, the, once you get busy with Shkulpa, which is the kind of street version, isn't it? You, you, you know, like the kids will say, Shkulpa, won't they, as a, as a kind of way of, sorry, soz, you know, that kind of thing you might want to say you might begin to think like then there's excuse me for sorry isn't there like sorry in, in english is also like pardon me i didn't hear what you said sorry for being alive sorry well, for excuse me is more i suppose if you're in the street and you're trying to get past someone yeah. correct someone correct someone. now do you say at this moment raquel do you say at the school or do you say call me sensor call me sensor is only if you want to like sarah said if you want to go by and you have to cross Good something, you have to put someone out of out of your way. Of yeah. course, you can use scoop in that sense as well. So scoop, like move, move over, please. So that's uh, a useful one. I think that's another yeah. useful one. Okay. Yes, of course, of course. 
And um, we've we've got them on the screen for you there. Discup formal and Discup uh, informal there for you from James. James, thank you for your help and support here. We will finish with dad jokes and your visual dad jokes as well, because we are coming up to 10 o'clock. Um, and yes, Connie Sensor, you might want to write down as well. And these, as now you know them, Sarah, you'll begin to hear them in people's yes. uh, in people's conversations and uh, you know my favorite place for learning the language is at uh, a cafe or a restaurant and this is what you'll hear the waiting staff say as they as they want to put something in front of you on the table you will very likely hear a conny sensor mm -hmm. and it might be that as you're writing down com you're thinking to yourself hold on a minute they just said conny sensor uh, like con man rather than com as in comms now that is an important uh, breakthrough to put to get under your belt at this level of Portuguese, I would say, wouldn't you, Raquel? The oh. pronunciation because we can again, bom dia. Your it's like B O M. That should be bom dia, but it's actually bom dia. What's going on there, Raquel? Why are we saying an N sound instead of an M sound? Uh, because of the root of of the language and also facilitation. So there are some words that, of course, you you eat some uh, some uh, parts of the word when you say them very fast. Uh -huh. There are a number of, of, I mean, my aunt used to say, sensa, sensa. Oh, really? <laughs> That's That's a, that. part, a lot of people will still do that. Sensa, sensa. And <laughs> do you have to do the movement as well? No, I'm just saying the context. But there are uh, there are few people that that will say if you if you hear sensa sensa so that's the short part that's the short version of only sensa of course it's not correct uh, but it's um, uh, it's the short part so you don't say only sensa because the sound c o m is more derived I, I, don't, I mean i'm not a language uh, linguistic uh, historian or anything but we have also a lot of uh, roots that come from uh, they are common in Spain, and so con licencia, con licencia. Okay, all right. So yes, that M and the N thing there. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going pretty well. We'll come back to Ipa. I think we'll finish with it because <laughs> that's yeah. a use, that's a useful uh, word to have. But we didn't do um bonoit did we um so there's there's an, coming back to the times of the day do you, would you would you care to repeat what you've got already uh, sarah for the for the day, the times of the day and the basic greeting okay so i've got hola bon dia hola bon tarde uh, i've got this this cooper yep yep Scoop. yep and commi sensor Conly sensor, right. But what we didn't give you was was the night time, uh, which is bonoit. Uh, bonoit is important. And that's where there's another distinction. So we know now that this is a, um, that's probably botard by the time you've eaten that. Uh, but then when you're looking out at the sunset, look at, the, look at you, your lovely pictures uh, there in Lisbon. Night is falling. But does that mean, that Raquel, that it's automatically bonoit at this point? Or is there another meal to, or drink to be had to, to officially make it no, so? No. Just to complicate things, bonoit only derives on having a sun out or not. Right. Okay. So when the sun's gone, it is now bonoit. Exactly. All right, so which might be five o'clock uh, if yeah, you're in or nine, nearly <laughs> or ten. Even it feels like it's we're getting close to those beautiful times of year when it's, it's not bonoit. So you would still be saying botard if you're yeah. going up onto the rooftop cocktail bar in Lisbon yeah. and the sun hasn't set yet. It's still yeah. botard. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Very good. Um, Portuguese. Um, he is. He's got a lot of these colloquialisms, I think, because he's married. Um, a Portuguese lady there. Um, and so, veja aqui, I think, is probably a bit of a colloquialism. But look here, which does sound very British suddenly. Um, and I don't want to overload you. We're coming up to 10 o'clock, Sarah. I think you've done in incredibly well to know these three times of day and when to use them. The obrigada, which will be yours, um, because uh, it's the, the, the female version, obrigada. Um, Desculpe, uh, Conley Sensor. Anything else that's vital at this stage, Raquel, before we look at IPA? 
Uh, or, or what do you want to know, Sarah? What's going to be useful to you? No, I think that's a good starting point, just sort of the greetings, thank yous, and then basically thank you to, to get out of the way. <laughs> Cuidado, cuidado. If you yes. want to like, oh, watch out. Cuidado. Cuidado. If someone says that to you as the 28 tram is coming hastily yeah. behind you, they might shout out, cuidado. Exactly. Uh, which means cuidado. Be, be careful. Yeah, danger possibly. Be careful there. Now, if they push you out of the way because it's getting really serious, a Portuguese gentleman might just gently move you away from the tram and say, yep, might they not, Raquel? This is a very useful word. That, that and, and some other words. <laughs> <laughs> That's more advanced, though, isn't it? Let's not do those. So. That's less than, like, 40. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to, by the way. So, um, Ipa, this is something when you hang out with Portuguese people, you will hear. This is a word for all, many occasions, isn't it? What's going on here? It, it comes from e rapaz. Oh. A is from rapaz, guy. Right, right okay. Um, uh, it, it, it again a shortened version of e rapaz. So, but nowadays we use we use it in the in uh, regardless of who we're speaking to. So it's a boy or a girl. We say epa. Uh, right. But it comes from e rapaz. So it's a colloquial way to say hey man. Yeah. Oh, it's like hey man. Yes. Okay. Or hey man. Or then, or if a goal is scored, it'd be like yep. You could use it in all sorts of. It's a it's a general exclamation there, Sarah. So if in doubt, would it be right for Sarah to just explete that possibly? Maybe not. Well, <laughs> <There's> some... <laughs> I, mean, I say it a little differently, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll try. And, I mean, that's the beautiful thing here. Um, I my my growing up as a as a teenager learning French. My my the reception in France is not perhaps as friendly as the Portuguese are when learning Portuguese. So don't let any of that put you, you know, hold you back, Sarah. I think that's a really beautiful thing to end this uh, first session yeah. with. Although I'm tempted to we didn't do seeing, did we? As as Raquel said, and now uh, because again, those pronunciation um notes are in there. See and now you will know, I, I'm sure, as yes and no. But sim again ends with S is S I M, and you would think it would be sim, but it's sim with a nasal sound. And then now is N A O, like botard, but that would be now, wouldn't it? Rather than Noah, as it's written. So there's a lot in those few words there of great keys to the rest of your pronunciation and, and, and beginnings of your. Portuguese journey but I think that's a pretty good place to start any no, questions thank you. I think that's um no I think that's the other sort of struggles you just pointed out with the with the yes and the no is that even if you bought a, a, a book to help you learn yep. it's very difficult you can't just read it as it's written that's the challenge <laughs> you, can't. you really can't and the things they put in those phrase books like you know um hello good afternoon to you could you tell me where I could buy a stick on soul locally you know those sort of the, what they call as useful phrases. Yeah. It's it's a it's a bit it's going to be a bit random and hit or miss, isn't it? Whether or not that is a useful phrase. So yeah, um, what better way than to just connect with people and around food and and conviviality? And that's what the Portuguese, of course. I think what is is funny, and I don't know if it's just an English thing, but I've heard I heard it actually as well when I was over there. I was at this um, cafe, and obviously when you're not sure, people just sort of default to some language that they know so yep. people were going gracias <laughs> oh really now we should say something about that shouldn't we raquel defaulting to spanish well, Look or at even french. Face. you know even i heard some french but it was because they sort of panic and they don't know really how what, what it is and they just sort of say something that they know that's foreign yeah. and think Yes, and then and if you're British, maybe for a second time a little bit louder. But if yeah. at all possible, it's best to probably default in panic to French rather than Spanish. Oh yeah, oh Much yes, yes. <laughs> okay. to anything to to you know German, Chinese, whatever. Much <laughs> all all of the above. Japanese, much better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good a good point and well made there, Raquel. And a couple more pictures then from your recent trip. 
Are you clearly having a great time? These pictures are fantastic, Sarah. Jacaranda time in Lisbon, aren't oh, they beautiful? Well, and th those um, trees were everywhere in uh, in Lisbon. Oh, beautiful. yeah. They're all yep. the, the colour. Yep. And then a, a sunset. And you may or may not be have been having a mojito at that at that time of the evening. How beautiful is that? So come again soon to Portugal. Let us know how you get on with these with these basics. And I think those basics, it's not not so much uh, a linear matter, I think, learning Portuguese. If you do commit yourself to some conversational engagement, you'll find an exponential rise in, in what you know and learn about Portuguese. Mm. It's not a, a long slog necessarily. And yeah, if you, if at all possible, you're 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 obviously a very gregarious and sort of convivial person that puts you in a very good position for engaging and learning. So um, good luck to you, Bosort, as we Portuguese say. <laughs> in these matters, <laughs> Raquel. <laughs> all right, as the Portuguese say, is what I should have said. Oh, yeah. we, you can include yourself. Eiros and dollars. These these are the basics that um, uh, Sarah needs to know from her industry, right? So Eiros is is it euros. Is that right? Euros. Eiros. Euros. Eiros. 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 Think Irish. But she's writing that down. Definitely writing that down. <laughs> yeah. And dollars would just be dollars, right? Dollars. Yeah. No, I should do any, any more dollars. No. And what might throw you is estados unidos, because that's where the dollars come from. Did you just say what? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Estados unidos, which is United States. It does. Uh, James has mentioned this before. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's and he's agreeing. Don't just don't just default to Spanish. And Estados Unidos is the United States. Muito complicado. It is. And your uh, the answer to your question about apps. Duolingo is currently training me to learn. Uh, the car has a key. The usual daily phrases. Yeah. So Duolingo for sure. Memorize are some of the apps. And uh, we look forward to this going on this journey with you, Sarah. So thank you for being a sport. Obrigada. <laughs> very good. Very good. And if you do want some Ishkurosh, um, or is that a question from Antonio? How many how many euros can he get for his Ishkurosh? I don't think they Spartan FX will be doing that. No. Um, <laughs> have a great day, Sarah. Um, uh, uh, by, um, not by Randy. Um, James, who's a very big fan of Spartan FX, said your your exchange rates are very good too. His last mm -hmm. um, his last transaction only cost him um, ten centimos to process, or ten cents US cents. Probably wasn't a massive amount to be fair, but yes, uh, good <laughs> service and competitive rates from Spartan FX folks. Find them through the Good Morning Portugal website. Uh, last words from both of you before we go to some dad jokes and some visual dad jokes this morning. Gone fairly well then, Sarah, for you this morning? Yeah, no, it was good. As I said, it's good to uh, understand um, why you're saying them as well as how to say them, I think. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And you'll come back and do more with us? I will. Brilliant. Maybe. <laughs> oh, well. It might be maybe better to be an evening thing and I might need a glass of wine. <laughs> it does help as well. Yeah, we can do some, we might do some evening sessions as well. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you for battling away on the M2, M25 to be with us. And lots of love to the Spartan FX uh, crew there in the office. And uh, to you, Raquel, what's your advice? This this wonderful woman who's helping people start businesses over here in Portugal and incredibly diverse businesses, cryptocurrency, psychedelics, schools, a, a gamut of businesses. What's yes. your advice to people coming over to Portugal, Raquel? Uh, coming to Portugal, just uh, surround yourselves with good professionals. Take it easy. One step at yeah. a time. One step at a time. And and also stop to enjoy the jacarandas and the sardinhas and the white wine. So don't oh, get well too caught up in the things that you need to do. Enjoy. Brilliant. Great stuff. Okay, uh, finishing with some dad joke action then. I went to work as an origami apprentice, but the company folded. You can try these in the office, Sarah, today. <laughs> I don't know if you want to try them with clients or not, Raquel. That could create a <laughs> problem. Okay. Um, do you know uh, how a silencer works? It's baffling. Nice oh, little technical one there. Oh, very topical. They say global warming will kill every single person on this planet. Sure glad I'm married. Oh, that's, a, that's dark, isn't it? That's really dark. I, that's, I'm sorry that we're ending on that. 
dog <laughs> no there. Um, and um, the visual dad joke then. Let's see if we can refresh our palettes with this. Uh, from James. Oh, look, dear Naps, I'm sorry I was so mean to you in kindergarten. That's right. We couldn't understand it then. But we sure can now. Mm -hmm. And he's got another fire starter. Dad, are we pyromaniacs? <laughs> yes, we are, son. Mm -hmm. oh, dear, oh, dear. So sorry about that. Have a great day.